Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another unboxing. Now, homage watches divide opinion in the online watch community pretty much right down the middle. Some people regard them as little more than fakes and suggest you should save your money for the original design. Others, myself included, have no problem with homages. I think they give people an opportunity to experience some of the look and feel of a watch without the often exorbitant price tag. Now I've looked at a number of homages so far on the channel, mostly Rolex Submariner style watches. Today, something a little bit different. This is the Phantom by Spectre, a new Singaporean micro brand, clearly taking its inspiration from the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak and Hublot watches. Let's flip the camera and get into the box. All right then, let's get into the box. So I took most of the outer packaging off, but as you can see, this one's still sealed. I haven't been in it, this one. Little Leatherman squirt here, gonna be perfectly sufficient for my purposes today. So Spectre time then. This is a new Singaporean micro brand. Big thank you to Gulshan, the owner at Spectre time for sending me this model for review. This is the Phantom. Uh, this is their second model. They do a quartz piece they've had for sale for a while now, but this one actually is on pre-order. Uh, they do a white and a black. I'm actually not sure what I'm getting today. Now, clearly this one inspired, shall we say, Ooh, here we go, a nice branded box, inspired by the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. I looked at the price of those APs, nearly spat out my tea, 16 grand, 16 grand, and that was Joma shop, that was grey market. Uh, this Spectre Time Phantom, yours for the much more reasonable price, on the early bird offer of $199. There we go, that looks all right. All right, what have we got here then? The usual warranty card stuff. Um, I think we're getting two years on this one because there we are, two year limited warranty, automatic. Now, shipping on this one is free if you're in Singapore. I believe it's 20 to $25. Uh, I got mine delivered this morning by UPS. Took only two days to get from Sydney to me in Singapore, which is, Fantastic. All right, let's get it out the box and get a closer look. All right, so there is the Spectre Time Phantom. And so far, so good. First impressions are there's a decent amount of weight to it and all finishing looks pretty nice. So at the moment, early bird special of 199. Gulshan is taking pre-orders on this. I believe that offer runs until the end of the first week in September. Thereafter, it's gonna be priced at 299, so a big jump if you miss out on the early bird. I think the plan is to eventually price these at around $349 from next year. So what do you get for, at the moment, 199? Not an awful lot of US dollars. Well, 316L stainless steel case, 316L stainless steel integrated bracelet. We'll talk about that a little later on. This one is running a Myota 8215 automatic movement. Kind of entry level, three hertz, uh, low beat movement, 21,600 vibrations per hour, six ticks per second. You're getting sapphire crystal with AR coating. As I said, there's a see-through case back. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, nice little sign Spectre Time crown there. And if you haven't picked it up, there's a Spectre Time logo on the back of the uh, second hand, which is nice on the counterbalance there. Now clearly inspired by the Royal Oak. I think when I first saw this one, there's definitely a whiff of the Seiko SARX 043045 in the bracelet design. And they've gone for something slightly different. It's not just a straight copy. There's the six rather than the eight screws there. And they haven't tried to ape the octagonal dial. They've gone for a more rounded look in this one. And also no octagonal style crown. You're getting a it's only pressed on the clasp, but again, at that price, it's not too bad. And a nice little Spectre Time logo there on the on the bracelet. Now, apparently, if there is interest, he's going to do a rubber strap for this model in due course. But at the moment, you're stuck with the integrated bracelet. Nice finishing, I've got to say. Nice brushing on that. I've been a long admirer of the, the Seiko Sarks. So interested to see how this one wears. 41mm diameter. Uh, 24 uh, mil at the lug width. This one is just under 12 mil thick and lug to lug of 53 apparently on this integrated bracelet. I'll pop it on the wrist in just a minute or so once we've had a look 
at the Myota. All right, so while I'm adjusting these links to size up the bracelet, gives me a chance to show you the case back and the movement. And there we go, the Myota 8215 beating our way through that nice little display case back. Not perhaps the most glamorous or decorated movement in the world, but always nice to see a mechanical timepiece in action. Sapphire Crystal, 21 Jewel, nice little Spectre logo there, stainless steel, five atmospheres, water resistant as mentioned. So a little bit closer up for a look at the dial. Now, interesting, just bat on indices, quite a plain dial. You've got the minute track around the outside there as well. Some nice finishing though, they've got that inner circle with a bit of cross hatching, some fairly straightforward hands. Apparently there's loom on the hands and the indices. And if you can pick up that nice little Spectre S on the back of the, the second hand there, just says automatic. Good choices, I think, keeping the dial nice and clean. Now, I wasn't quite expecting that, but a screw down crown. Only 50 meters water resistant, but still perfectly serviceable. Uh, being one of these Myota movements, oh, there we are. The kind of slightly gritty hand wind on these, but not a problem, just an observation. And then we're into date set and pull it out again for the time set. So. All fairly familiar if you've ever used one of these. But a nice touch, I think, the screw down crown there. Oh, as well. There we are, and that's it in. Nice and secure. Little logo on the side as well. And there it is, sized up for my seven inch wrist. Now just push pins on the bracelet. Love the way the bracelet catches the light there, all those angles. Just push pins, but fairly easy to do. The last bracelet I adjusted was a Seiko 5, so this one was just heavenly, nice and easy. Quite a lot of weight to it, 167 grams size for my seven inch wrist. Just be warned if you've got smaller wrists, you're gonna get some angles as these uh, long lugs, as the bracelet then conforms to your wrist. If you've got seven and a half, eight inch wrist, it won't be a problem, but if you're seven or less like me, you're gonna have to expect a, a bit of an extra angle on the top there. So pretty good so far, great set of specs for the money. That's why I wanted to get this video up early so that if you're into this watch, if you like the look, you're looking for an AP homage, at 199, you can argue with 316L stainless steel case, bracelet, decent level of Myota, automatic movement in there as well, two year warranty and some loom. I think overall this thing is looking pretty good. As usual, I'll start a watch check app running on this one today, come back with a more comprehensive review in a couple of weeks time, but that'll do for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.